Afternoon, everybody. I want to begin today with an update on the campaign to defeat ISIL wherever it tries to spread. Today, at the request of Libya's government of national accord, the United States conducted precision airstrikes against ISIL targets in CERT, Libya, to support GNA-affiliated forces seeking to defeat ISIL in its primary stronghold in Libya. These strikes were authorized by the President following a recommendation from Secretary Carter and Chairman Dunford. They are consistent with our approach of combating uh, ISIL by working with capable and motivated local partners. GNA-aligned forces have had success in recapturing territory from ISIL, and additional U.S. strikes will continue to target ISIL insert and enable the GNA to make a decisive strategic advance. As you may have seen earlier today, Prime Minister Al Siraj, the head of the GNA, announced that he had specifically requested these strikes as part of the GNA's campaign to defeat ISIL in Libya. As we've said for some time, the United States supports the GNA. We would be prepared to carefully consider any request for military assistance. We have now responded to that request and will continue to work closely with the GNA to help the government restore stability and security in Libya. As you have heard the Secretary say many times, combating ISIL's spread along with defeating it in Iraq and Syria and defending the homeland against external ISIL attacks are the three primary goals of our military campaign plan. That campaign is showing results. On Thursday, President Obama will receive an update on the campaign when he holds a meeting of the National Security Council that will take place here in the Pentagon. We look forward, of course, to his visit. One other schedule note for you. The Secretary is meeting at this hour with Prime Minister Lee of Singapore here in the Pentagon. Singapore is a close partner on a range of security issues, and the Secretary was looking forward to today's discussion. Earlier today, they participated in a wreath-laying ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. And again, the Secretary was uh, pleased to welcome the Prime Minister here to the Pentagon uh, today. And with that, I'd be happy to take your questions. Courtney. Uh, when did the GNA make the request for the U.S. Ha help? When did the U.S. approve it? Um, how long will this air campaign begin? And when, uh, can you talk a little bit about the targeting? Who, um, who requests the targets that the U.S. strikes are going to hit, and how does the U.S. vet those targets before striking them? Um, I can tell you that the request uh, was submitted by the GNA recently. I'm not going to get into the specific timetable for it. Um, and again, this was something that uh, was uh, considered uh, after consultation with the national security team, of course, the secretary and the chairman making their recommendation to President Obama with regard to this assistance for the GNA at this particular moment in time. The requests will be carefully coordinated. They are specific requests from the GNA, and they'll be closely coordinated uh, with uh, the GNA going forward. And again, this, uh, this all stems from their request for this assistance, and this specific uh, area here will be the area around CERT where, CERT, where ISIL uh, has maintained its uh, most significant presence. I'm just going to ask all my questions again since you didn't actually answer any of them. But so when, if you don't want to say when the GNA put in the request, when did the U.S. approve the GNA request? How long will this campaign continue? Um, and how exactly will the U.S. vet the targets that presumably the Libyans will request that the U.S. strike? Um, I'm not going to get into the specific details about the timing of the uh, request or the approval, but it's other than to say that it's been in recent days. Uh, and uh, this follows, again, a conversation, an ongoing conversation with the government of National Accord. Uh, the specific targets will be precision targets. These are targets that uh, the GNA, as, as we've indicated, has already made progress on the ground, significant progress on the ground against uh, ISIL uh, in the CERT area. But there are precision targets which they've asked for our assistance with in which they have had more trouble. These are targets, for example, I can detail today was a, one of the targets struck today was a tank. Um, it is that kind of precision uh, location, precision target that will be targeting that the, the uh, GNA at this point felt like that would be uh, a helpful, helpful support for their efforts. So. Again, how does the U.S. vet those targets? It, it's not, not what the tar what are they, but how does the U.S. vet them? 
Uh, the, well, let me ask it this way. Sure. Will the U.S., when the Libyans make requests that the U.S. strike a target, will the U.S. vet that target before striking it? Yes, it absolutely will. And so how does that process occur? Who, who does it? Are, are there Americans on the ground who are, who are vetting the targets on the ground, or, or, or how does that happen? Um, there is a collaborative process, a very closely coordinated process that we've engaged with with the GNA in terms of uh, assessing and determining the precise locations to hit. And uh, yes, the United States military will be uh, rigorously involved in every step of this process, and we will be reviewing and deciding uh, those list of targets after, again, close consultation with the GNA. And then how long the campaign will be last? Um, again, we'll be in, uh, this will depend on the request of support from the GNA, um, and we're proceeding along that line. We don't have, a, uh, we don't have an endpoint at this particular moment in time, um, but we'll be working closely with the GNA. Uh, and we certainly hope that this is something that does not require a lengthy amount of time. We've seen, again, great progress by the GNA on their own in, in the fight against ISIL. We've seen ISIL's numbers reduced in Libya. Uh, and we think that this precision uh, airstrike capability, this unique capability that we can provide to their ongoing efforts uh, can make a difference in this campaign. Yes. Um, thanks, Peter. Uh, so. We'll well, going forward, you, your your statement uh, indicated that there would be more strikes going forward to basically dislodge ISIL from from Syria. At the at the request of the GNA and close coordination with the GNA, if they so, feel it's necessary. So will each strike need to be requested by the GNA and then approved by President Obama, or how 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 would that work? Uh, this will be done in close coordination with uh, the GNA. The president has authorized these strikes uh, to move forward, correct? Um, and uh, at the recommendation of Secretary Carter and Chairman Dunford. And uh, it will, again, be determined, the pace and the frequency will be determined by our close coordination with the GNA. And uh, is the ultimate goal to be completely dislodge, is that like the end point uh, at which the point these, these strikes would stop is when uh, ISIS has been completely driven out of, uh, out of Sirte? Well, again, the goal for the GNA is to eliminate ISIL from Sirte and from the country. And uh, we'll be working closely with them, and uh, they'll be determining the pace and the success of this campaign. Arguably, they will be—they have their forces on the ground conducting their efforts, and this will be in support of, of their efforts. Uh, ISIL's numbers have been reduced; they have made significant progress in CERT already on their own, and we believe this uh, can make a difference. Uh, hopefully, in a short amount of time, and we'll see. And again, we'll be working closely with the, the government uh, of Prime Minister Siraj. And just kind of a broader question, um, the U.S. Uh, mil US military strikes in Libya so far have been sort of one-off measures. Uh, there was a strike in February, which as far as I can tell is the last one, um, at least that, that we've been told about. Um, does this kind of herald the, the like greater U.S. involvement in a, in a more wide-ranging air campaign um, in Libya than we've seen recently? I think what this heralds is, uh, as we've said for some time, uh, the most important thing to, to addressing the threat of ISIL in Libya was the formation of, a, of the government. Uh, and we've seen that now. The GNA has uh, made significant progress, and we've seen their forces on the ground make significant progress uh, against ISIL. And we applaud that. We support that. Uh, they have asked for this specific uh, assistance, and our assistance at this point will be limited uh, to these strikes in this area. So then, from what you just said, does that does do these airstrikes uh, announced today um, indicate um, greater U.S. confidence in the GNA uh, than you had previously? Um, I think it indicates uh, yes, our support for the GNA, uh, our support for them uh, from a military standpoint to the extent that we can be helpful. Um, we want to carefully consider these requests, and uh, at the president and again acting on the recommendation of Secretary Carter and Chairman Dunford. Uh, felt that we could make a difference uh, on the battlefield, specifically with our capabilities as they move uh, very aggressively to uh, eject ISIL from their territory. Yes, Tara. Peter, could you give us a sense of why now? Um, was it that the GNA has become more formed that the president was more comfortable with now moving into a military phase? Or is there something critical about CERT right now that the airstrikes could be a game changer? I think what's changed right now was the specific request we got from the GNA. Um, we've been in contact with them. They've been making progress on their own. Um, but I think even, uh, and I refer you to the Prime Minister's comments uh, this morning, uh, 
they felt that there were specific capabilities we could bring to bear that they were limited in terms of their military capabilities being able to conduct. And one of the things that we're able to do uh, is to conduct precision airstrikes in an urban area like this, uh, reducing the risk of civilian casualties. And uh, clearly, that was a concern on the part of the GNA. And our ability to, to strike with precision was a capability that they sought out and, and requested specifically. A couple on the airstrikes themselves. Um, as you said, it's a precision environment. You need to have kind of accurate pointing. Are U.S. forces on the ground helping spot targets to help avoid civilian, civilian casualties? We have a close coordination with the GNA, but there are no U.S. Uh, boots on the ground. No, uh, Special Forces have been rotating in and out. The Pentagon has openly talked about it throughout yeah. the spring, but there's the, none right now. The, you know, the, the role of those forces were to uh, establish communications uh, and contacts in Libya, uh, and uh, that has not changed. So there's not a specific role for U.S. forces uh, insert as part of this operation. Yes, Andrew. Um, Peter, but following on Tara's question, um, as far as uh, troops on the ground, it was our understanding that there had been some small teams moving in and out of uh, Libya over the past few months. You say that there's no troops there now, but do you expect that to continue, there to be uh, occasionally temporary uh, missions on the ground? Um, again, with regard to this particular operation uh, in CERT, um, we do not expect U.S. forces to be part of this specific operation. Um, I'm not going to speak to uh, other U.S. forces with regard to, to Libya overall. Um, we don't talk about their, uh, their disposition. We have indicated in the past we have had forces on the ground getting a, a picture there, uh, and, uh, and that's been helpful and successful, but that's separate and apart from, from this operation. Yes, Andrew. I, I keep calling you Andrew. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Bill, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm jumping. I'm, apologies. It's Monday. Should, um, should we expect daily airstrikes like what we see in Iraq and Syria? Um, I, I don't want to predict uh, the pace because this will de de be determined in large measure by uh, the GNA and the progress uh, that they make. Um, but uh, we aim to support them uh, as best we can, carefully uh, assessing the circumstances and the targets. Um, but uh, we've conducted strikes today, and uh, we'll be prepared to conduct uh, more if needed. So is it just is it just U.S. aircraft, or is the coalition aircraft also part of this new campaign? Um, today, we're referring specifically to U.S. aircraft. But it might change going forward. Uh, I'm going to speak for the United States military here. Okay. When, you, when these airstrikes are provided, are they supporting ground maneuvers of Libyan forces? Or are they deliberate, hitting deliberate targets, you know, C2 and these sorts of things? Um, I think, uh, again, they'll be in close coordination with the GNA, and I could, there are Libyan forces uh, supporting the GNA on the ground in CERT, and uh, I think it's uh, fair to say that our strikes will be uh, in, will be supportive of their efforts to try and retake territory in CERT. They've ha had a very successful effort thus far in doing so, uh, and this, is, uh, again, going to give them an opportunity to have a take strategic advantage to push their uh, offensive even further. And as you said, the numbers have been reduced. It was uh, previous intelligence estimates had uh, ISIS at a fighting force of around six, up to 6,000, I believe. Um, is that the current assessment that, that you guys have? Uh, the assessment numbers that I've seen, and again, I would it's hard to gauge uh, ISIL numbers anywhere, um, but I've seen that number, uh, at least our assessment, is that it's been reduced, and the number may be closer to about 1,000 now. 1,000 in Libya altogether? Or? In, in Libya altogether. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, that, let me, that's specific to CERT, but that's the predominant area where, where ISIL has, uh, has, in terms of geography, is occupied. So. Got it. Um, uh, lastly, we, uh, the UN had agreed to um, arm uh, the Libyan forces. Mm -hmm. um, those special ops guys, they were seemingly trying to identify some potential partners on the ground. I was wondering if that's, you know, if we've seen any progress on that front. Um, our military support to the GNA is limited at this point to these airstrikes, uh, and and so. No, that's not part of what we're doing. Yes, Carla. Oh, thank you. 
Were there Bill, any? Bill, I'm really sorry about the Andrew thing. Although Andrew's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> two quick questions. Were there any high value targets in any of these strikes as there were in the previous two U.S. strikes in Libya? Uh, that was not the purpose of today's uh, strikes. And then also, since you have said in a statement <clears throat> this will continue um, by evaluating the GNA's request for strikes, is the press going to get a readout of these strikes as we do in Syria and Iraq? Um, we will try and provide you as much information as we can. Um, we felt it was important, obviously, to highlight um, these first strikes, and we'll continue to provide as much information as we can. Peter, yes, was, it, uh, was it drones or fixed link? Um, not going to discuss uh, platforms, but we have, as you know, a range of capabilities uh, in the region that we'll be able to draw upon uh, if, as this uh, particular operation continues. So there was a strike today. One in February that you confirmed previously. Mm -hmm. Is this the third strike now? Was there one before the one in February? Uh, yes, there was an, an earlier strike. I believe it was November. Um, was the first strike against ISIL by uh, U.S. military? Three strikes. That's it. Uh, yes, there was the February strike, as you pointed out. There was uh, the strike against uh, a high-value target in November, and now uh, these strikes uh, in support of the GNA. Leader. Uh, to clarify a couple things, Peter, I just want to make sure I understand correctly. Um, General Dunford, about two weeks ago, said he thought there were only a few hundred um, ISIS still remaining inside CERT. Are these new numbers, or you're saying there's a thousand inside CERT, or you're saying are there a thousand in the country think, as a whole? I think it's consistent with, with what uh, uh, General Dunford said. The numbers I have is that they're under a thousand, possibly several hundred still in the city itself. Hundred thousand, possibly several hundred. Yes. And then, um, just in answer to a previous question, you said initially there were no U.S. forces on the ground, and then you seem to clarify later you meant specifically to this operation. Are you saying that right now there are? Are you making it clear there are no U.S. teams of any kind on the ground, or are you just specifically saying there are no U.S. on the ground related to this particular operation? Um, I'm. This is specific to this operation. Um, I'm not going to get into um, what we've talked about previously, the small number of U.S. forces that have been on the ground in Libya. Um, they've been in and out, and I'm not going to get into that any further. Okay, but so you're not saying definitively there are n that those, none of those teams are on the ground there. We shouldn't, Correct. We shouldn't interpret this to say there are none anywhere. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Lucas. Peter, why are you limiting your operations just to CERT against ISIS in Libya? Because that's been the specific request of the GNA. So the United States has outsourced its counterterrorism efforts to the, the Libyan government? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, we're acting in support of the uh, internationally recognized government of Libya, uh, helping their effort to target uh, an enemy that poses a threat as well to the United States. And we're doing that uh, with capable, motivated local partners, just as we are in Iraq and Syria. Uh, and uh, and. So we are honoring that request and carrying out something that we think is not only in Libya's interest, but also in U.S. interest as well. Is this another example of leading from behind? This is an example of us providing support, military support, for a, a partner on the ground uh, that is trying to reclaim their country and provide security, stability for their people, and targeting uh, a, uh, a group that has a hateful ideology that uh, aims to do ill to the people of Libya and to the people of the United States. In the, the American public, can they expect a, a broader range of airstrikes instead of just three in the last eight months going back to November, but uh, more airstrikes? And given what we saw in Afghanistan last week, hundreds of U.S. forces battling ISIS in eastern Afghanistan, is this an overall effort by the Pentagon to ramp up operations against ISIS and its affiliates? As you know, Lucas, the, the, as I mentioned at the top, one of our uh, military efforts, specific efforts, is not just uh, although it's absolutely necessary to defeat ISIL in Iraq and Syria, it is not sufficient to deal with the threat posed by ISIL, the metastasis of ISIL, as the Secretary has referred to it many times. Um, so I think it is fair to say that we are continuing our efforts on that front as well, uh, in places like Afghanistan, in places like Libya, and we'll continue to do that because we uh, want to, again, uh, a strike at ISIL anywhere it rears its head, and that uh, Libya is one of those locations. And we are supporting those local forces on the ground uh, that uh, 
that see this threat directly in their own uh, in their own country, and that's what we're doing in Libya. And lastly, given the bombing in Kabul today that the Taliban claimed credit for, is there going to be more of an effort from the Pentagon to increase its operations against that group as well inside Afghanistan? Well, I think you know what we're we're doing in terms of the support uh, for the Afghan National Security Forces, the changes with regard to authorities recently, and uh, the decision with regard to troop levels. And so I think we're doing uh, a significant amount right now to try and help the Afghan National Security Forces secure their own country. And, uh, and that's a recognition of the importance of that mission. And, uh, and what we believe is important right now to support the Afghan government in, in their own efforts to secure their country. Yes, Paul. Um, is this strike, can you just characterize for us why this strike is different from the strike in February and the strike in November? Um, is this the beginning of a more Iraq-like operation uh, to support local forces uh, as opposed to one-off strikes that we've been seeing before? Well, obviously the biggest difference is the GNA, and this was a specific request from uh, the internationally recognized government of Libya. Uh, in terms of the goal of trying to take on ISIL, uh, in Libya that's consistent with uh, that counterterrorism effort. Um, but the specific difference here is being the request from the GNA and the precision uh, kind of airstrike, airstrikes that we're being asked to conduct now. One of the things the chairman had said in the past was that he was waiting um, for the, the, the situation with the government on the ground to change before the U.S. deepened its involvement against ISIS in, in Libya. What has changed? Um, what, what, what has changed? So that has made the U.S. Confident, confident enough now to get involved in this fight? Well, I think you can look at uh, our confidence and the international community's confidence in the government of national accord. Um, and the other thing that's changed, uh, as, as we've talked about here in the briefing room, is, is the successful efforts to take on ISIL by those local forces in Libya. Um, they've been very successful on their own, and uh, they have not, up until now, uh, requested this kind of uh, assistance. Uh, now they have, given that they are in CERT, that they're taking on ISIL, uh, and, uh, and while they're having success, they do see uh, areas of opposition, areas where ISIL's dug in, and uh, opportunities for us and our precision capabilities to be able to assist them in, uh, in ejecting ISIL from particular locations. Yes, Coyle. Uh, thanks, sir. Two questions. One, um, do you think uh, is Secretary satisfied that uh, those nations uh, in the Middle East, uh, Arabs and Muslims, are doing enough fighting against uh, ISIL? Oh, I think the Secretary is very appreciative for, for those countries that are uh, obviously part of the coalition and contributing to, to the effort. Uh, and uh, But as with uh, every member of the coalition, he would welcome uh, further support. Um, and I think uh, uh, we're looking forward to uh, future meetings of the coalition, future contributions from a range of nations, uh, not just nations in the Middle East, towards that effort. And as far as uh, Prime Minister from Singapore today meet, meeting with Secretary, um, uh, is that discussion included uh, ISIL and also the South China Sea, uh, the Chinese uh, behavior in the region? Um, we'll wait to see the meetings going on right now. Um, but I think it's fair to say that those are likely topics to come up, but uh, we'll have a readout for you later today. So, yes, June. Um, so just to kind of follow up on Paul's question and to put it explicitly, <clears throat> is it accurate to say that in no the November and February strikes were against individuals or targets that the U.S. saw as a direct threat either to itself or to allies, but these are more specifically to help local forces mm -hmm. on the ground um, take out ISIS? I think that's fair to say yes. Um, and then, secondly, can you just give a broad characterization of what kind of uh, targets you're hitting, like infrastructure, you mentioned a tank, like just kind of broad categories. Um, and then also, is this the first time the GNA has requested this sort of strike? Um, yes, it is the first time they've requested this kind of assistance. And again, the specific targets um, that we are looking at are, are, are things that need to be hit with precision given the risk of civilian casualties, uh, things that the GNA itself and its forces, uh, the forces supporting the GNA, have been unable uh, to target effectively on their own. Um, today, for example, the, the strikes that were conducted did target a specific tank location, um, and there was also uh, two ISIL vehicles that were targeted in a second strike. 
Yes. I just want to be sure because because everyone keeps we keep comparing this to the strikes in, the strikes in November and February, which were t going after high value individuals. They were after specific individuals. Versus my understanding, this correct me if I'm wrong, is this is the beginning of a campaign, an air campaign in Libya, in which the U.S. military is supporting GNA mil militias who have pledged their their loyalty to the GNA. Is that fair? Is this is this this is the beginning of the president has approved these strikes and they will continue until CERT is liberated? Uh, they will continue uh, as long as um, the GNA is uh, requesting this. But they this don't have to put in the request every single time. There is, a, <clears throat> there is now this blanket authority that exists for the U.S. military to, to strike when these the GNA requests, puts in the request. Right? These requests will be uh, carefully coordinated with the GNA. This, will, uh, this all originates from GNA requests for assistance. Uh, and the president has given the authority for us to have to carefully consider those requests. Okay, but just to be clear, because I think comparing this to these two previous strikes that were going after individuals, each one, it sounds as if this is these were strikes that were carried out today, and that's the, the end of it. But this is the beginning of an air campaign over Libya. We correct? are we are prepared to to carry out more strikes uh, in coordination with the GNA if those requests uh, are forthcoming, uh, and so. And the request the request <clears throat> has been granted, right? There was a, the authorization the has been granted. So the GNA has requested uh, U.S. <clears throat> airstrikes, um, to, again, precision airstrikes to help in their campaign as needed. Uh, and we, uh, today we delivered on that request. Uh, after careful consideration, we're prepared to, to uh, carry out more strikes in careful coordination with the, the GNA each and every step of the way. And how exactly does that authority happen? So the GNA puts in the request to who and who is, how high up does, the, does each strike have to be approved? Um, I, I'm not going to get into every single aspect of our coordination with the GNA, but again, the president has approved um, this operation will be carried out uh, under the command of AFRICOM. Uh, and there will be, again, a process in place for the coordination on any future strikes with the GNA, and it will be determined uh, by uh, the commanders uh, there overseeing this operation. So the head of AFRICOM has to approve every strike then? Is that Gen General Walhauser, right? Is that uh, I'm not going to get into every single aspect that, of this. Because you do. The in in Afghanistan, you do. In Afghanistan, we know that... It's that under, it's under AFRICOM. Iraq, it's under AFRICOM. Okay, so the, so the head of AFRICOM has to approve every strike that request that comes in. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, just to follow on that, does the GNA have to request every single U.S. airstrike, or can the U.S. now, if there's a target of opportunity, act without having a, a new chain, a new request up the chain? This will be uh, coordinated with the GNA every step of the way. But does it have to be originated from GNA, or if the U.S. sees a target of opportunity? Can the U.S. then reach out to GNA and say, well, this might be advantageous for your goals? It'll be, as I said, a careful collaboration coordination with the GNA in terms of specific targets. I can't get into hypotheticals right now, but right now, these first strikes were conducted, uh, 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 selected by the GNA, working closely with us. And one more. Um, do you have any sort of ballpark figure on how many fighters were hit in today's airstrike? Um, I don't. Nancy. Under what legal authority are these strikes being conducted? Under the 2001 authorization for the use of military force, similar to our previous um, airstrikes in Libya. And I'd like to go back to previous questions because I'm not very clear. Does the GNA have to ask for each strike, or is it? Um, I, I don't understand how the, how the decision the the strike authorization happens. Does the GNA has it asked for a blanket request, or does it have to make one for each strike? Um, conducted by the U.S. military. All of the strikes will be coordinated with the GNA. Right, but I, what I don't understand is do they have to put in specific requests every time or is it one request? I, I still don't. I know other people have asked it, but I, I don't understand. There'll be specific requests each time. Strike. We'll be From coordinating each and every strike. We'll be rigorously looking at each and every strike with the GNA. Right, I understand looking at, but in terms of do they have to request that strike every time for that authorization to happen? It's, these are, uh, again, this is the, a request from the GNA for these airstrikes. They'll be carried out with uh, each and every strike will be worked out with the GNA uh, in coordination with our forces. Right, so it sounds like to me that the request for strikes 
to help with this campaign and search. Specific, specific, specific locations, specific so targets. So they gave you the specific targets. And, and we'll continue to give you specific targets. And we will continue to work with them um, on the appropriate targets and circumstances in which we're able to uh, assist them with those targets and circumstances when we're not able to because of the risk of civilian casualties or, or other factors. Now, will the United States propose targets to the GNA? Um, we will uh, coordinate with them. Of course, we have ISR um, that will be uh, critical to assessing the situation in CERT. So we'll be working with the GNA and closely coordinating each and every strike, uh, as I've said. Can I finish asking Cor more questions? Um, sure. Okay. Um, could you also clarify, you, you hesitated to say that this would continue until CERT was liberated. I, what is the end state for the United States? What does CERT have to look like for these strikes to cease? Well, we'll be working with the GNA. They obviously want to see ISIL eliminated from, uh, from CERT. That's the stronghold that ISIL has been occupying. Uh, and uh, so the GNA will have, has already had success significant success in removing ISIL from this area. We hope these airstrikes can be conducted over a short amount of time and that uh, their forces will be able to mo move even uh, faster in terms of removing ISIL from that area. So that will be, uh, that will be the, the limiting factor will be what's happening on the ground in CERT. Well, I understand that the GNA has a, a, a perspective in terms of how long these strikes to go. What I'm asking for is what the U.S. military considers its objective there? Is it simply to outsource its air power to the GNA? I'm having a hard time understanding what the specific U.S. military objective is, not the, the GNA. The U.S. military objective. objective is to uh, eliminate ISIL in its key stronghold in Libya uh, and doing that in conjunction with the internationally recognized government of Libya, which has asked for our assistance in this case. And so that's what we're doing. And forgive me for asking a dumb question, but why would it the need why would taking out a tank and two ISIS vehicles be so critical to the liberation of CERT that required airstrikes? What, is, what are those specific sites that were, you mentioned that were struck today? Why are they so critical for the um, elimination of CERT inside, or excuse me, elimination of ISIS inside CERT? I'm well, this one tank in particular uh, had been in a location that uh, uh, both the GNA and we had uh, seen for some time and had posed a threat and directly challenging not only GNA forces, but also indiscriminately targeting civilians in the area. Uh, and we thought uh, the GNA and our forces agreed that this was a appropriate target to strike at this time. Uh, it was also in a position, a strategic position within CERT, uh, that the GNA forces felt it would make a difference in terms of their strategic advance to el eliminate that target. So that's a, a, one example. What's that? And the vehicles? Um, the vehicles, uh, as I understand it, uh, this is a, the vehicles themselves were posed a threat to GNA forces again on the ground. Uh, and this was a specific request from the GNA uh, because these vehicles and the ISIL fighters there posed a threat to local forces on the ground that are trying to recapture a particular neighborhood in CERT. And the ability to strike this target precisely without exposing uh, civilians to, to uh, risk uh, was the the reason that strike was conducted at this time. And one last thing, you've made um, many references to civilians in CERT. What is the U.S. estimate of how many civilians remain in CERT? Um, I'll try and get that number for you. I don't know that offhand. Thank you. Can you just give us a sense of how close the um, forces loyal to the GNA are to retaking CERT from Islamic State? Is there any sense of where the battlefield stands at the moment? Uh, let me see if I've got a specific number for you. Um, they have had made, they've made significant progress, obviously, in the last few weeks and, and months. Um, I have seen a percentage number, but I want to make sure I get this, uh, I get this right. Obviously, in terms of the sheer numbers of ISIL forces, we think those numbers are down, as I mentioned earlier, um, and that it, there could be several hundred within the city itself. The number previously uh, was higher than that. Um, and let me get back to you, Paul, on what we sense is the, how much, how much they have. Uh, I don't know if we've got a, a precise number, but I'll try and get that for you. Yeah, or if there's a part of the city that's still left to be taken, that yeah. remains a stronghold or something like that. The other question is, do you envision a greater role for you <coughs> troops in, as the requests come in for greater air power? Because in Iraq and Afghanistan, 
there's a similar model going on where uh, local forces are calling for airstrikes, um, but they seem to be doing so in conjunction with the U.S. forces that are on the ground aiding and assisting them. But we apparently don't have those forces there in Libya. So do you see a greater role for them to make sure uh, at, that these requests are? At this time, I don't see any expectation that uh, U.S. forces would, again, be part of this operation. Peter, were leaflets dropped on that tank in those vehicles before the airstrikes? Um, I'm not aware that they were. And have any U.S. military assets been moved into the region to help conduct these strikes? In the past, the February and November strikes were conducted out of the United Kingdom. And that would be an awfully long way to continue a, a regular pace of operation. Um, we have uh, a variety of a assets and capabilities in the region that we feel are adequate to the task at hand. And going back to Afghanistan, uh, concerning the, the battle last week against ISIS in uh, eastern Afghanistan involving hundreds of American troops, has there been now a commitment to actually raise the, the – are there now combat operations happening in Afghanistan? Um, we've had a CT mission in Afghanistan uh, for some time, uh, and we continue to carry out that CT mission. And uh, ISIL poses a particular threat, as you know, in Afghanistan to the stability of that country. Uh, and we'll continue to partner with uh, Afghan forces in carrying out our counterterrorism mission at the same time conducting the train, advise, and assist mission so that Afghan security forces ultimately can take control of the country for themselves, secure the country for themselves. They're making excellent progress. Um, but we think uh, they need more support at this particular moment in time. Last one, Andrew. Uh, just quickly, is there anything else uh, part of this operation other than airstrikes? Is there any uh, intelligence sharing, ISR support, or lethal or non-lethal aid that's being provided to these uh, forces on the ground? As I mentioned before, there is ISR support. Um, so we have a good picture of uh, what's happening uh, in CERT, and that's something, of course, that uh, uh, will be important in terms of our coordination with the uh, with the GNA. Any lethal or non-lethal non supplies being provided to those forces? No. Our uh, extent of our support right now is uh, these airstrikes. Austin. Do you have any update on whether there will be a, any kind of funding requests for the additional troops for Iraq and Afghanistan? Uh, I don't. Uh, there will be. Um, as as you know, I just don't have the specific process. There will be a, sup a request for supplemental well, there will be a need funding. There will be a need to provide funding for these forces, as we've said previously. Um, but in terms of specific process, how that's going to be carried out, um, I don't have that answer for you yet. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everyone.